Teich, Tiluxli, Dark Spruce, Red Chihuahua. A lot of places that we're looking at now were a gathering place of our people. Because a place like this, it meant survival or death. I remember coming to this property back in 1990. And I remember seeing hardly any vegetation along the stream banks, how straight the, the stream was through there and all the mine tailings. We knew there was a problem out here and it wasn't anything that was gonna recover itself except over thousands of years. The Middle Fork John Day is, it's this vital salmon habitat and it was so damaged. In the 1860s, they discovered gold in this valley, and hundreds, maybe even thousands of miners came in within a few years. There were little flecks of gold in the river, so they started to dig up the river. And in those days, they used manual labor, they used horses. Then the dredges were invented. They dredge mine 200 acres uh, across two miles. They'd go across, they'd, they'd work these areas, and then move the boat, work these areas, move the boat. You can kind of see these layers where the rock was spit out of the side of the dredge boat. And what was left on the floodplain was no topsoil, no vegetation, no trees for shade. It was a moonscape of mine tailings. We used to talk about, gee, it'd be great if the river could be restored. But we didn't think it could. We didn't think it ever would. In 2001, the tribes acquired this property with funding from the Bonneville Power Administration. Their goals for this land are to make it ecologically healthy and to have all the native animals and plants come back and be healthy. When we do something, it's not just, not only for the tribes, but for the local people and the way this fish migrate to. The Confederate Tribes of One Springs do a lot of work enhancing the salmon runs just for that purpose. Our children is our most valuable resources, and we want them to have what our elders passed on to us. It benefits the Warren Springs Tribe and the other tribes, but it also improves recreational fishing opportunities, which helps the economy of these local rural areas. This may be one of the largest river restoration projects that's happened in the state of Oregon. These fish habitat projects are very important for all these tributaries that go into the Columbia. A lot of the soil has been washed away from the dredge mining action, so we had to find soil, then take that soil and spread it over the top of these floodplains that we would construct. We've had to sort rocks back into natural conditions and then construct new channels that are meandering. while the construction was happening. We would salvage the fish and move them to other safe areas of the river. Just on this past phase, we had over 23,000 you know, fish and frogs and other things that we pulled out of this channel for phase five. We planted a lot of grass seed. We planted a lot of containerized plants. And then we put an irrigation system in for a few years. We put an eight-foot fence all the way around the project to keep the deer and elk out of there, to give these plants time to grow and create a, a new ecosystem that's valuable to both salmon and other wildlife.
and uh, we started small with phase one, and then that split, and then phase three turned into phase three, four, and five, and it, you know, a two-year project turned into a six-year project. We have so many crews out here. We have a fencing crew, we have a plant crew, we have the construction crews. We also have Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. We have the two labs that are out here and they have crews. So really, you think about large project like this really takes a village to do. There's a pool that's right on the edge of the project right now in phase five. It's just on the eastern boundary, a massive pool. Last week we counted between 40 and 50 adult Chinook in that pool right now and they're holding. And they're holding with excavators running beside them and they're still holding. I haven't seen a river become an active river so quickly. They travel all the way at the Columbia, make it around those dams, travel up the John Day River, the journey that they've made is pretty amazing. This is important work for not just the tribes, but for, for all people that live in the Northwest. If we do what we're doing in the name of fish, and we can use that, maybe it's a sneaky way of doing it, but we can do that, right? We can say that it's for the fish. What else is it for? It's all the riparian vegetation, it's the wildlife, it's the osprey and the deer and the mule deer that come down here, the elk that come to water down here. It's all of the beautiful things that come along with that restoration. It's all connected.